So in series nine, in order in which they were filmed, we began with an episode called Mulberry Close, which is all about some neighbors who become suspicious that uh, the person who lives opposite them may have killed his wife. Well, if this turns out to be real and he really has murdered her, we'll have to turn it over, won't we? Not to the police. No, to Netflix. And that episode was all filmed via the door cam, wasn't it? So that was the mm. sort of intriguing way of telling that story. One shot, the entire thing. We've been inspired by looking at a lot of the sort of true crime documentaries which uh, you get on, on streaming platforms now and where they gather together footage from things like doorbells or police body cams. And that felt like a really interesting way of telling a story. But having a single frame and just, you know, having voices off and, and not ever changing that frame, not ever pushing in or having editing, it relies on you staging things. And we just thought that it was a really good technique of, of telling what is the traditional kind of, is my neighbor a murderer story. Oh my God. Popcorn. What's happened? What's he doing in there? And it was really fun to do actually, wasn't it? Because we knew that each take, you couldn't jump between takes. You just had to get one perfect one. And there's a big long sequence in the middle, which is about a seven minute sequence where things had to be very accurately timed, cars pulling in when characters came in and out. It was, it was fun to do. It was the first one we shot and it was a nice sort of gentle passageway into series nine. Wasn't yeah, it? it was great. And it did feel like we were a sort of theatrical ensemble. We played on a lot of things that, you know, that we are familiar with, like when you put your recycling out and the foxes come and eat all your food. And we played with the sort of tropes of the nosy neighbors who come over and tell you what you're doing wrong. Yeah, I think it's a really good fun episode. Yeah, it's good. I don't know, you've been creeping around every time I go out. I beg your pardon. I've got divots in me back garden from your heels, Sheila. It should be me calling the police on you! What's with this shouting? Is everything all right? It's gone round the twist! And then we filmed an episode called The Trolley Problem, which was a, a sort of psychological cat and mouse story about a psychologist that saves a man from jumping f to his death from a bridge one night and brings him back to his house to look after him. The story unfolds in a way that you don't expect because they have a connection that you don't realise at the beginning, so... It was quite a dark psychological tale, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Christ. It's you, isn't it? You're Ellie's dad. It was a lot of dialogue and long takes. We did one take that was like, I think it was like 11 minutes, wasn't it? So mm. It was a long, long take. So we had to be on it and know it. And it was good for that. Mm. But uh, that's a challenge just to not go wrong, you know? And then the next one was called Boo to a Goose. And that's all set on an underground train compartment with an assorted group of characters who are trying to decide what to do when there's a, a theft happens. And that's an ensemble comedy. They get trapped in the tunnel and then this sort of kangaroo court ensues. It's a sex pest in the carriage, operates in the dark. My purse is gone. I just heard it, now it's gone. Strike that, sex pest and thief. Doing the train compartment, you've got nine characters in one train compartment and a, and a film crew. That all was quite claustrophobic. A lot of these number nines are very claustrophobic. Yeah. You're right. Uh, yeah, I think so. And then we'd filmed one set in an escape room called Control Alt Escape. That's a family that um, go to your typical escape room, quite a dark looking room set in a serial killer's lair and they've got one hour to escape the room. Steve plays the dad of the family and I'm the man running the escape room. And that was a, quite a, an exciting episode full of puzzles and tricks and traps. It was a very claustrophobic set and a lot of detail that, that had to be picked up. I mean, as far as like twists, which would become sort of the bane of our lives, really. <laughs> uh, I think the control alt escape is a good twist in a traditional way, isn't it? You're thinking you're watching one thing. Mm. It's not what you think. The family are inside this escape room trying to get out and 10 minutes from the end, we are shown the reality of the situation, which is Steve is in a coma and he is in his head trying to get out and wake up. And then we have an episode called The Curse of the Ninth, which is a period episode. And it's uh, really about classical music. And within classical music, there's this thing of The Curse of the Ninth, where there's a belief that once you've composed your Ninth Symphony, you're going to die. Whoever completes my Ninth Symphony will end up the same as me. So we have a composer who's 
obsessed by this idea and it's quite a gothic um, horror story. We had a couple that we did a, a lot of drafts of, one of which was The Curse of the Ninth. We knew it was a great setup, this idea that, you know, a composer feels doomed after his ninth series. And there were echoes, of course, with us doing our ninth series and... Um, and completing it. Completing it. And would we be cursed? Will we drop down dead when we finish yes, filming? we'll see you next Friday. It was all about writer's block in a way. And it was, it was nice to be able to play with how we feel about how hard it is for us now to write yes. episodes. Yes, good allegory. But we were not sure how to uh, end it. We enjoyed pulling in lots of other sort of horror tropes uh, in, into that story as well. So I think that we haven't seen it yet, but I think that's going to be a really rich visual feast. It felt like because we were in a nice expensive location, we were in a country house and in these period costumes, it felt like Elevated. Yes, it? it was good, yeah. Relieved himself all up and down my lady's curtains, he did. Really? And the final episode, and we're filming it now, is called Plodding On, and that's an episode set at the rap party of Inside <laughs> Number Nine, where we play ourselves. It's sort of the end, and it's about what we'll do next, and um, some sort of surprises along the way. We meet some people that have been in it before. We get a lot of guest stars back. And it's a sort of celebration, a poignant ending to the story that you've been watching for the last 10 years. So what shall we do then? It was just something that we thought of and then thought it'd be funny to do that. And it feels like it's the sort of story that does give you an ending to something that you can't really get an ending for. I think we only ever would have done something like that if it was going to be the last series. Um, yes. Because it's, it's a nice way of looking back on everything we've done and us celebrating it. And that's what it's all about. And hopefully the fan base will, uh, will celebrate with us. Yeah. The episode's like a shrine to number nine. It's got a lot <laughs> of detail in it. There are hidden Easter eggs to all the episodes that we've done within it. So if you're a fan, it will be a very enjoyable experience to pick your way through and mm -hmm. see all the nods to all the other episodes that we've ever done. Just to let you know, we're watching the film now, so if you want to... Sure. Yeah, thanks. I, I guess it is a pause. I think that we'll, we might welcome doing the odd special in the future. And I think it would be fun then because it would be like, oh, should we, have we got one last story in us or a Halloween story or another Christmas one? So it is a pause and um, we've got the live version of it to think about. It's not as sad as it might be if it really was the end because it doesn't quite feel like it. It feels like we're the DVD of The Wicker Man where it's always the definitive and then two years later another one comes <laughs> out. <laughs> it's never really the end.